today. And the first is, we know that there are also um, at least two kids that are here uh, that are involved in scouting, but are involved in scouting at a different location, a different campus. Uh, Jacob and Connor Steptoe, two of our guys here, are both involved in scouting. Hi, guys. There they are. Here. Uh, so definitely wanted to mention that. Uh, it's just such a wonderful community thing uh, for our boys and girls. Uh, also, uh, Herb Bevis is here with us today, Dr. Herb Bevis, and he is back there in the blue cap, and he was actually even pre-Sandy, um, and, uh, and really helped get, uh, as, a, as a child that was a part of scouting ministries from the very beginning, so we're so very grateful to you, Dr. Bevis. Let's give him a hand. must have seemed at least 
too good to be true. Because see, in the ancient world, food was precious. You couldn't go down to the local Publix and pick up the fried chicken meal deal. That's not how it worked. People lived much closer to drought and to famine than we do today, especially here in North America. Milk and wine, they, they weren't staples, they were extravagances. They were only available to landowners with vineyards and herds or flocks or available to those who had other goods that they could barter to receive those luxury items and to see the Israelites as prisoners of war, they had none of those things. So in these verses, what Isaiah offered the people of Israel was more than a meal. God's lavish spread was more than about food. It was about extravagance. It was about homecoming. It was about blessing. It was about a journey that would lead them back to feast at their own table, out of the exile from Babylonia. A Lutheran pastor put it this way, the prophet invited the Israelites now in exile to come to a lavish meal and receive a renewal of covenant blessings. We talked about that last week, the covenant that God made with Abraham. This was a renewal of that promise, of that covenant. And yet, these were human beings after all. I mean, after all these years, would the people of Israel still want to come? I mean, 40 years, that's a long time. It's, it's probably not hard to imagine that some of the Israelites began to doubt. We talked about that last week as well with Abraham starting to doubt those promises of God because they hadn't been fulfilled in the timely manner that he wanted them to be. They had become impatient. And so I can just imagine their thinking, well, why don't we just assimilate into the Babylonian way of life? You know, why don't we just stop waiting for God? We can pay our own way here. We can do it. The question for the exiles seemed to become whether to worship the seemingly more powerful, the seemingly more powerful Babylonian gods, or to worship and stay loyal to the God of the covenant, to the God of their ancestors. And this is where Isaiah really challenges them. He asks this pointed question, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? He was calling the people to faithfulness. He was calling them to patience. For them to have their mind on the high road, on higher things, to not settle for what they had in Babylon, to not settle for what they could just scrape up with their own resources, but instead to lean on the everlasting resources of the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. In the Gospel of Luke there is a parable about an impatient man with a fig tree. And the man grew hungry, and he went to go get some figs from his tree, but there weren't any. As a matter of fact, there hadn't been any figs on that tree for three years. And his anger, he ordered his gardener to cut it down. But the gardener wanted to take a more measured response. He suggested, sir, let it alone for one more year, and, and I'll prune it and fertilize it. And, and if it bears fruit next year, well, good. But if not, then you can cut it down. Lent is a season of life. This 40 days of repentance and renewal and reflection in which we are called to reflect on the impatience in our own lives. Our desire to take that easy road instead of the higher road, it's an invitation 
to recognize our own limitations, to realize that we are the creation, not the creator, and to turn to God, to put our wallets away and to stop asking what we might be able to buy when the feast has already been laid before us. Everyone who thirsts, come to the water. And you who have no money, come and buy and eat. This year, this Lent, we like the fig tree. We have another chance to transform our lives, to transform our hearts. We do have a chance to acknowledge our shortcomings and embrace the amazing grace that is available to each and every one of us. These gifts of grace from God, they are free, but they are not cheap. Because when we choose to bear fruit for God's kingdom, when we choose to feast at his table, we accept that invitation to the banquet, then we are giving something else up. We're choosing not to go to a different table. We might have to sit next to people that we don't like. We might have to eat food that isn't our particular taste. But even so, we will feast like we have never feasted before on food that will fill us up forever. There's a funny story about a grandmother who wanted to take her family out to dinner for a special treat. And this was a nice restaurant, and she was so excited, and she said, beaming with pride, order whatever you want. It's on me. And so her family picked up those menus, and they started ordering appetizers, and then the main course, and then the dessert came out. And finally, of course, it was time to pay the bill. And the grandmother opened up her purse, and she realized she'd forgotten her wallet at home. Well, fortunately, someone else around the table had a credit card and was able to pay the bill without anyone having to wash dishes. But at future dinners for years to come, the question would inevitably be asked with a wink and a smile, Graham, do you have your wallet? <laughs> and yet the good news for us today the good news for us today is that none of us have to pay for the grace that God sets before us. None of us can afford that gift that is offered to us. What we really need, what will satisfy the hunger and thirst of our souls isn't anything that we can find on a lunch table. It's not anything that we will be able to purchase with our wallets. There is nothing to fear from accepting that invitation to the table of plenty. Because Isaiah proclaims, let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Solid helpings of forgiveness are what is on the menu for God's people, for the meal that he serves to us. This grace of God is far more filling than anything else that we have mistakenly put our trust in. God reminds Isaiah's listeners that the ways of God are not our ways, and I thank God for that every day. God leads us to a table where all are welcome. All are fed, all are beloved. We still have a way to go through this Lenten season. The journey is about seeking a way that's not our way, but seeking the pathway to God's heart. May each of us, in the midst of that journey, find contentment, find sustenance 
as we walk together on that journey home. And all God's people said,